Sometimes people feel pressured around springtime to do a lot of spring cleaning. And you guys know my style. I'm not so into the doing a lot of work. So what I wanna do in this video is share with you some great spring cleaning hacks, some quick shortcuts that will still get you great results It'll make your house look great, but you won't have to spend tons of time doing it. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you're on my team about spring cleaning. It is not exciting for you. You're kind of not looking forward to it. Also, a special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Make sure that you stick around to the end so you can hear about a special offer that I've got just for you. What you'll notice at some of the world's finest hotels is that there are people who are constantly polishing and painting and retouching things because hotels are so frequently visited and scuffed and banged up, especially with all that luggage rolling around. And you know, people are in a hotel, they don't treat it like their home, that eventually the hotel can start to look aged. So they always have to stay on top of that. And that's how those really nice hotels manage to look pristine all the time. Now, if you think about this in the context of your own home, Throughout the year, we get fingerprints on the wall, we get scuff marks where we might kick off a shoe or throw a bag or scrape something along the wall. And these scuff marks over time can build up and compound. And they actually, they make the house kind of look old and dingy. And you know, the paint, when you get this nice fresh coat of paint, everything looks so clean and beautiful, but those scuff marks can really detract. Now, scuff marks aren't just for walls, they are for floors as well, particularly wood floors or other hard floor surfaces and baseboards. So if you can just go around and deal with some of those scuffs and I've got some tips for you on how to do that quickly, you'll see these small little scuff marks once they're gone will actually make your home look so much fresher and so much cleaner with very minimal work. First up, I've got a DIY magic eraser for you. Put a little bit of baking soda in one hand, take a dampened sponge in the other, and just dab the corner of the sponge in the baking soda, tap it off. Of course, test this on a hidden area first to make sure it doesn't remove any paint, and then just gently scrub away that scuff. Now you're gonna use the soft side of the sponge to do this, and then you'll wipe the scuff away with a clean cloth to remove any baking soda residue. The other thing you can try is an actual rubber pencil eraser. This is great for getting rid of scuff marks on wood floors. So you can see I'm doing this here. It's very simple and it works very well. Now finally, and I'm not going to be doing this this spring cleaning season, perhaps next, you can take cans of paint that of course are the right paint for your wall and just go over and quickly do a little touch up here and there. That's what those hotels do and that's how they always stay looking fresh. One of the most high impact things you can do around springtime is clean your windows. But that is a big ask if you think about the traditional way of cleaning windows, which is spraying and wiping. And even if you're using the S pattern and a really good microfiber cloth, it's gonna take you some time. Instead, I've got a really great tip that professional window cleaners use, because let me tell you, they're not standing there with a cloth and a spray bottle. They're using a double-sided squeegee and a very easy solution in a bucket. Here's what you'll do. Get yourself one of those rectangular shaped buckets. Next, you're gonna fill that bucket with a gallon of hot water, so you might wanna do your initial dipping with a glove because it is gonna be hot. You're gonna use a cup of white vinegar and a teaspoon of dish soap. Swish your squeegee around and use your squeegee. You're gonna use the fuzzy side first, flip it around and use the actual rubber squeegee second. You will literally be able to zip your way from top all the way to bottom of any window in mere seconds. Something I've noticed online is that the internet is chattering about how difficult it is to declutter a closet. I get it, it's emotional, it's time consuming. You don't wanna get rid of stuff because you think you might need it at a certain point in time, but at some point we do have to just bite the bullet and declutter. So what I wanna do is tell you some of the tips, tricks, and hacks that I've used that have worked really, really well for me, and then you can give it a shot at home. The first thing I have started doing, I'd say for the past four or five years, is changing out my closet, getting rid of my fall, winter stuff, putting it away, and bringing out my spring, summer stuff. This gives me a chance a few times a year to do a mass pruning of my garments. I clean them and I hang them up in my closet. I hang the hangers facing backward. That way, all of my garments 
are starting at, let's call it ground zero. When I wear a garment and then I rehang it, I'll flip the hanger facing the opposite direction. That way I know that I've worn that garment. The next thing I have are two bags in my closet. One I have for those items that are just on the hanger that I'm never wearing. I pick those items off and I put them in a bag. The next bag I have is just for straight up donations. The donation bag, that one's easy. Anytime I see a friend or a family member that I wanna give clothing to, I'll just bring that bag with me, I'll see what they want or I'll offer it to someone else. If no one wants it, I donate it. The other bag, I leave there for the season. If I want something from that bag, I just go in, take it out, wear it, and it's back reintegrated into my closet. If at the end of the season it has not been worn, I know that the items in that bag I can safely donate. If you're in your kitchen and you happen across a lemon and five minutes of your time, I've got a two for one cleaning job for you. Take that lemon, cut it in half. The first half of that lemon you're gonna squeeze into a bowl, fill it halfway with water and put in your microwave for three minutes. While that is cooking away, you're gonna take some coarse salt and sprinkle it on your cutting board. Take the other half of that lemon, use it fleshy side down, and scrub your cutting board, kind of give it like a nice facial, in a circular motion. This is a great way to clean and deodorize your cutting board and clean your microwave at the same time. To wrap these tasks up, you're just gonna rinse off that cutting board and pat it dry, and once the microwave beeps, just take that bowl out and give your microwave a good wipe down. Now you've given your microwave and your cutting board a spring cleaning, all thanks to a lemon and five minutes of your time. Spring cleaning could mean, could, not should, could mean that you wanna take your glass items or your occasional items and give them a thorough clean too. Now Chad just got this off our shelf for the sake of the video and I'm looking at the bottom and I think this thing needs a spring cleaning. So in order to do this, but you know, for some of these, the shapes are awkward, you might not have a brush for it, or like who even has time for that. A really quick, easy hack that you can do is fill the bottom of these glass vessels with rice. And you're gonna add a little bit of water to it and a little squirt of dish soap. And what you'll find is that the rice and the water help to scrub off any sediment. Now, if you have any hard water stain at the bottom, you can use vinegar to get rid of that as well. When we think about cleaning, we often think about what's in our line of sight. So typically we don't look down too often and we don't look up too often. We're gonna focus on the up. During spring cleaning, high dusting is something that we should be doing, but it's something that we don't really wanna do because it kind of means step ladders and lots of work, but I actually have an easy hack for you. Take a mop pole and take a microfiber cloth Put the microfiber cloth over the back side of the mop pole and secure it with an elastic band. This is kind of like a cleaning magic wand. You can use it to just walk around your house, dipping into any corners or any molding, any areas on top of a door frame, door frames themselves. Do you know how dusty those get? We never think to clean those. You can use your high dusting magic wand to clean any and all of those areas. And if you notice that your microfiber cloth is getting really cruddy, just flip it inside out or move it to another section, reaffix it and keep going. Spring cleaning will be a little bit easier, I promise you, with these tips. And if you wanna make building a website a little bit easier, check out Squarespace. You can create a beautiful website or an online store with award-winning templates and receive 24 seven customer support. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform to create a beautiful website. Simply go to squarespace.com slash cleanmyspace to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. And that brings me to this comment question, which is, what is your spring cleaning nemesis? What is that one spring cleaning task that you know has to happen that you really just don't wanna do? I'll tell you what mine is. We have one room in the basement where we started to keep baby stuff, like Riley's stuff that doesn't fit her or stuff that we're you know, waiting to use when she gets a little bit older. Um, that room is a disaster and I, I avoid it. I pretend it doesn't even exist unless I have to put something in there and then I just shut the door and I don't look at it. That room needs to be dealt with. I know I need to do it this spring, but that is the one I just don't want to get to. So let me know your spring cleaning nemesis in the comments down below. If you want to see what we're up to during the rest of the week, aside from finding ways to spring clean the house, you can follow us on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds. The two of us are at Clean My Space. 
Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And if you want to learn more about Makers Clean microfiber cloths, click that button right over there. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.